hello, and welcome to the Smart Family of Cooling Products. Today, it's my privilege to walk you through this 80-ton high-static industrial air conditioning unit. This particular model is an SACP81A-HS. This is an industrial air conditioning unit. It has a very, very high TD capability, or drop in air temperature, and it's a high static model, so we can blow that cool air a very, very far distance. We get lots of force behind the air. In a moment, we're going to walk through and do the startup procedure for this particular unit, but before we do that, we're going to start with safety. Our job always starts and ends with safety, so let's go through a couple safety aspects. Uh, number one, this unit has a unit circuit breaker installed on it. The unit is electrically protected by this unit circuit breaker with a lock lockable disconnect handle. However, electrical protection upstream of the unit is the end user's responsibility. So that means a disconnect or electrical protection could be a distribution eyeline panel, it could be a circuit breaker on a generator, it could be a circuit breaker of fuses in a customer MCC. However, uh, means of electrically protecting the unit upstream of the AC unit, that's the end user responsibility. Okay, so we have electrical protection. Uh, safety item number two, you always want to be trained and approved to work on any air conditioning package. So please, if you're working on this gear, make sure you've been trained, make sure you're approved to work on it. Number three, I'd like to go over the personal protective equipment that's required to work on rentalized air conditioning units. I'm gonna go through our PPE standards. Please, when you're working on a job site, talk to your customer, make sure you know your company's PPE requirements, and whichever is more conservative, utilize that means of PPE. I'm gonna go through Smart Family's PPE requirements here, just for reference. Okay, first, I've got a hard hat on. Next, I've got safety glasses. I'm wearing gloves as approved for the job I'm going to be doing. And then I either have a vest, reflective vest, or reflective clothing. And then I have steel toed shoes. Those are our minimum PPE requirements. Okay. Now that we've gone through safety, we're ready to do the startup procedure on our industrial 80 ton high static air conditioning unit. For all Smart Family SACP units, we normally have a five-step process for getting an air conditioning unit started. So I'm gonna walk you through those five steps. Step number one, when you receive this unit, inspect it. Look for damage. If you find any damage anywhere on the package, call the location where you rented the machine from and let them know so you're not charged for it. We've walked around this unit and this unit is in great shape, we're good to go, okay? Uh, item number two on our startup checklist, we want to make sure that there's good, clean air path for the air coming into this machine that we want to cool. So what that means is we want to open up our inlet connections or return air connections and our outlet air connections. So on this package, we have a quantity four 20 inch inlets. So I'm going to open all four 20 inch return connections or inlets. We normally want to open up all the return air connections. We never want to starve this machine for airflow, so we've opened up all four return air connections. I'm going to go over to the outlet side of the machine. This is our discharge air or our supply air. On this particular model, we have two 20-inch connections. Under most conditions, we will want uh, two 20-inch ducts hooked up to the supply air side. So we see we've opened up all of our duct connections on this particular unit on uh, step number two. Now this particular model will do 100% outside air. It'll do return air or it'll do blended or mixed air. Therefore, you can choose whether you're gonna run return air or just leave it open and suck in 100% outside air. This unit is capable of running 100% outside air, okay? Follow me back over to the return air connections and we're gonna go through step number three. Step number three is our filters. When the units leave Smart Family, they come with washable polyester media. 
When you receive the machine, you want to make sure that you've got good, clean filters. We don't want to lose efficiency by the machine by running really, really dirty filters on the package. So I'm looking inside the unit and those filters look pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and proceed with step four. Step four on the machine is to check the drain pan. I mentioned before that this unit is high static. That means we generate a lot of force with that blower. You can see inside we have a stainless steel drain pan and just on the other end of the package is the inlet to the blower. We want to make sure that nobody's put anything in that drain pan so that nothing gets sucked into that blower and causes damage to the unit. Our drain pan looks very good. It's stainless. It's clean. There's nothing inside. We're ready to go. One thing to note on our drain pan, you'll see we collect all the condensate and we run it down the bottom of the drain pan. Then we have a PVC protected P-trap inside the base of the package and there's our drain outlet. If we're setting this up on a job site and the customer doesn't want condensate pooling on the ground if we're on a roof, we want to make sure and hook up our hose connections to take that condensate and deliver it where we want it to go. Okay, So that's step number four. Now if you come with me to the front of the machine, we'll go to step number five. Okay. Step number five is actually going through the startup procedure. So I've looked over the machine and my airflow and cooling exterior switches are in the off position. I already have my generator running and my distribution panel is allowing electricity to flow through the cam locks in the machine. I'm ready to turn on my unit circuit breaker. So I turn my unit circuit breaker to the on position. All Smart Family SACP units are protected with the phase monitor. That phase monitor protects against rotation, but it also looks at over and under voltage, as well as imbalance leg to leg. So there's lots of things that could keep power flowing through the machine. When we start up the package, we will get an incorrect power light at start because there's a time delay on that phase monitor. Typically it's set for 15 to 20 seconds. So when you start at the machine, don't be surprised if you get 15 to 20 seconds of incorrect power and then it switches over and you get your control power on light. So my control power on light is on, which means that my phase mo monitor has engaged, given me control power and I'm good to run. If you continue to have an incorrect power light after more than 15 to 20 seconds, Check your rotation. Check to make sure that the voltage that you're giving to the unit matches the phase monitor setting. And check your voltage phase to phase and phase to ground. Okay. Next step in the startup procedure, I want to generate airflow. So I'm going to turn my exterior airflow switch from off to on. This unit is equipped with the VFD. I'm currently running the blower in VFD mode. You'll see there's a short startup delay and then the blower starting to ramp up. I can hear it now. Come with me to the outlet side, outlet airflow side of the machine. I'm at a little bit less than 50% on the blower speed pot. After you have established airflow, allow the machine to run freely without turning your compressors on for at least three minutes. This allows you again just to establish airflow through the job site. I've done that, now I'm going to turn the cooling switch from off to on. When I do that, my compressors are going to come on. There's typically a time delay set for the compressors. You'll see there was a short time delay for compressor 1, and then I already heard compressor 1 came on. After my time delay for compressor 2 makes, we'll hear compressor 2 come on, kick in, and start cooling. When the compressors start to come on, we would expect our leaving air temperature to start to drop. It's about 90 degrees or so here, so I can achieve very easily 55 or even 50 degree air with this particular machine, depending upon the location of my speed pot, how much airflow I'm running through the machine. So now that we've waited, I have both compressor 1 and compressor 2 running, no trips on the machine. I'm going to go check the outlet air temp.
So now the machine is running. We have airflow and we have both compressors on. Let's go through and repeat our five steps just so we know what we are. When we receive an SACP unit, we walk around the unit for damage. Step number two, we make sure that our return air connections are open and the appropriate amount of supply air connections are open. Step number three, I check my filters to make sure they're clean and ready to run. Step number four, I open up my drain pan, inspect it for anything inside the drain pan, and hook up my condensate line if needed. And step five, I go through our startup procedure. I make sure I'm getting the right power to the machine. I turn on airflow, allow airflow to run for three minutes, and then I turn my cooling stage on and let my compressors come on and run. Thank you very much for watching this introductory video. Please stay safe out there.